So I was scrolling through YouTube a couple days ago when I came across this video by Graham Stephan. I thought to myself, hey, I want to be a millionaire, so I clicked on it. But as I was watching, I realized something. What's even better than being a millionaire? Being a Rocket League Grand Champ. Now, with this realization, I created the 17 best habits that I actually used to get to Grand Champ. And make sure to stick around for the entire video because there may or may not be some surprise tips that you need to know. And hey, you see those like and subscribe buttons right there? Give those bad boys a little love tap for the YouTube algorithm. Okay, enough intro, let's get right to the video. You would actually be surprised, but getting the right amount of sleep can massively improve your gameplay. Scientists say that getting between 8 to 10 hours of sleep per night actually maximizes your reaction time and hand-eye coordination. When you're sleep deprived, your performance becomes sluggish and you actually play worse. I tend to struggle a lot with this, and when I actually get a good night's sleep, I notice that my gameplay improves dramatically, and I get a lot less tilted when my teammates literally throw, like how can you be so- As you can see, I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, but <laughs> you get the idea. In order to really improve, you want to maximize your ability to play, which can only be done when you are sleeping well. Look, you're not gonna know what you're doing wrong unless you see people doing the right thing. It's pretty easy to fall into the mindset that your teammate is doing everything wrong and that you're literally the best player to ever exist and it's just your teammates that keep you in plat two. Oftentimes, you can't notice your own mistakes, so watching players who are better than you allows you to see what they're doing that you aren't, which will massively help your improvement. Now, I'm not saying that Gold should watch RLCS to learn how to improve. The difference in gameplay is just so massive that it's almost a completely different game. Obviously, you can still pick up some tips to improve, but realistically, you should aim to find a creator you enjoy that is 1-2 to two ranks higher than you. Hand in hand with watching people who are better than you, you should get into the habit of watching your own replays. Now I personally hated the idea at first because I thought it was super boring and I would just simply rather play than watch replays. However, when I finally got into it, I realized something extraordinary. Damn, I'm kind of trash at the game. No, but seriously, watching replays is one of the best ways to find out your own mistakes in your gameplay. In game, it's super hard to have an objective viewpoint of what you're doing wrong in the moment, because bad habits you formed over your career are hardwired into your brain. Watching your replays removes yourself from the in-game environment, and you can actually see that maybe it isn't just your teammate that throws, and you are probably just as trash as they are. This is honestly not really talked about that much in the Rocket League community, but I've found that it's actually a huge part in your gameplay. Finding the right card design can significantly boost your focus and engagement in the game. Using a design you feel most comfortable with allows you to only focus on your gameplay and skill, instead of getting distracted by the amenities of your car. I can't tell you how many gold, plats, and diamonds I see rocking the most flashy and animated cars I've ever seen to the point it lags out their game. There is a reason that higher level players tend to have simpler car designs and less flashy amenities. It's not just because it looks clean, although it does look clean as well, but it's because it allows less distraction from your actual gameplay and puts more focus on your skills with the ball rather than the looks of your car. Remember, beauty comes from within, not from forest green heatwave with forest green zombas and the matching halo drip. Literally, if I could tell you to train only one mechanic for the rest of your Rocket League career, it would be to train shooting. The reason players like Ocalid, number one ones player in the world, and first killer, arguably the best pro player in RLCS, dominate in almost every single game they play, is because they have a complete mastery over shooting. They understand exactly how to hit the ball with the utmost power every time they make contact, and they place it exactly where it needs to go every single time. Now, back when I was around champ 1, I barely trained shooting. I just kinda did whatever, and I just air dribbled a bunch in free play. I mean, it was kind of a vibe, not gonna lie, but it just didn't help me rank up. It was only when I discovered the benefits of training shooting that I really found improvement in my game. 
Casual matches are pretty fun, right? I mean, you can play without worrying about your rank and losing games. Well, this could actually be a main reason why you aren't improving. Playing too many casual matches will put you in the stagnation mindset, where you don't focus on improvement and instead focus on hitting cool shots. In casuals, you usually don't match up against people at your skill level, and people in casual matches just don't try as hard. This makes it super hard to improve and translate your casual match skills into your ranked matches. Once you start queuing ranked matches instead of casual, you will notice a much quicker improvement in your gameplay. Your rank honestly doesn't really mean that much. It's literally just a picture on the screen. One really bad habit I had formed was being scared to play ranked because I was afraid of deranking and feeling like I was trash. This is a terrible mindset to have because you end up caring more about your rank than improving and finding out the areas you need to improve. I have found that focusing on improvement rather than focusing on a specific rank will actually help you rank up faster in the long run. You'll find that you actually become less tilted after each game because you're not focusing on trying to win every game to rank up and instead focusing on improvement in your own gameplay. If you form the habit of focusing on improvement first, ranking up will come naturally and much faster than trying to focus solely on ranking up. Solo queue Rocket League can be some of the worst experience you can have in all of gaming. The amount of toxicity, inconsistent teammates, and overall helplessness you experience can make many players want to quit their Rocket League journey. A huge way to have a lot more fun with the game and rank up much faster is to try to find friends around your skill level and key with them. You can build chemistry and play with each other much better than having to adapt to a different playstyle every game. This will allow you to rank up much faster and be a lot less tilted after playing. Now, I know this isn't really an option for a lot of players, but there are plenty of ways to find people to play with. You can join the official Rocket League server, the Rocket League Reddit, or even join my Discord to find friends to play with. The options are endless. For 99.9% .9 of goals scored on you, there is always something you could have done better to stop it. Obviously, some goals are just completely out of your control, but in most cases, it is always partly your fault. Stop blaming your teammates when you get scored on. It literally helps nobody, and all you're doing is just making yourself feel better when you lose your ranked games. When you start blaming yourself for getting scored on, you really start to notice the bad habits that you've formed in your gameplay, and it better helps you realize where your inconsistencies lie. Don't fall into the same old habit of logging into Rocket League, practicing air dribbles for 10 minutes, and then hopping into rank. This is not training. This is just AFK branding and hoping for the best. Trust me, I did this too, and I still do this sometimes to be honest. For each training session, you should load in with a specific goal in mind. This could be to improve shooting, aerials, saves, or even car control. No matter the mechanic, you must have focus and an actual goal while you train. Otherwise, you'll just end up practicing the same mechanics you've been practicing for three seasons and you won't rank up. Improving in Rocket League is a serious grind, so try not to get too demotivated when you don't see improvement immediately. There have been countless times in my Rocket League career where I felt like I just wasn't improving and I plateaued hard. Trust me, every time I almost wanted to give up. But since I've now hit Grand Champ, I can confidently say that these plateaus will pass and you just have to keep pushing through. Surprise tips! When encountering a plateau, there are a few things you can do to stop sucking and start improving again. Do this car control training set that I use that is almost a foolproof way to stop plateauing. Try learning new mechanics. This allows you to focus on new ways to control your car that you haven't already learned. Change up your car design or camera settings to get a fresh look at Rocket League again. Now, back to the video. I actually didn't really pay attention to my boost usage at all until I was around champ. Consequently, this was also the rank I was stuck in the longest. Boost management is something that not many Rocket League players tend to focus on, which hurts them tremendously when trying to rank up. 
You have to be able to understand boost pad placements and when to go for boost and when to stay with the play. Making it a habit to always be aware of your boost levels throughout the game is essential to being able to stay with the play. For a lot of players, this means realizing that you don't always need the 100 boost pad, and there are plenty of other small pads that you can pick up scattered around the map. I went over this more in depth in my how to rank out of diamond guide, but essentially, developing an understanding of how much you use your boost can separate you from other players in your rank, as you will be able to be much more involved in every play. Please, if you load into games and even type one word, you are hindering yourself from ranking up. You don't want to distract yourself with talking to other players, and typing in chat opens a gateway for people in game to be as toxic as possible towards you. There is really no benefit to typing in chat. You will either get flamed with toxicity or you will end up being toxic towards your teammate or the other team. In every situation, you will most likely end up taking the L. So just keep your hands off the freaking keyboard. Unless you play on keyboard, then turn off chat, I guess. But yeah, stop typing. It's a bad habit. Now, occasionally changing your settings to keep the game fresh is perfectly fine and encouraged, but I'm talking to those of you who change your settings every 3 seconds because these are the new best settings. Yes, I'm talking to you Garrett G. Aww. Look, changing your settings too much means you spend more time adapting to your new settings than actually improving. You won't have any consistency in your gameplay because you have a different camera layout every week. The best habit to form is to simply configure your optimal settings once, then leave it alone. This is usually when you've been losing a lot or you've just had a long day, and every mistake your teammate makes just aggravates you to your core. Every whiff shot and every miss save just makes you want to rip your controller in half and punch your monitor straight through the fucking wall and destroy- This is where you need to put down your controller and take a deep breath. Go take a break. If you keep queuing, you'll enter rage queue mode, and you'll find yourself logging in the next day two entire ranks below what you were yesterday. When solo queuing, it's super important that you're able to adapt to your teammates different playstyles. So many players just play the exact same way every single game, and then blame their teammates for their own lack of ability to adapt to play. Look. This is why you aren't ranking up. Developing the habit of observing your teammate's playstyle is essential to ranking up. For example, if you notice that your teammate is a little ball chasey, that means you should play more defensively and let your teammate pressure the ball. If your teammate happens to be playing really defensively, that means your job is to now pressure the ball and attack. Really, you can win so many games just by simply adapting to a slightly different playstyle. This is one of the most important habits to get down. You simply cannot try and learn everything at the same time. Splitting up your focus across learning too many different new mechanics, techniques, and habits will cause you to suck at all of them at once. Throughout my Rocket League journey, I've realized that focusing on one specific mechanic to improve upon is much more beneficial than trying to improve my overall gameplay. This is because you aren't really able to focus on improvement in every single aspect of your gameplay, and you'll end up getting distracted with too many different mechanics and just not improving at any of them. Now, using the habits previously listed, such as watching your own replays, you can discover a specific aspect of your gameplay that you need to improve, and focus on improving that aspect solely. As you do this more often, you'll notice that your overall gameplay will improve, as you're improving each skill one by one, adding up to create the most cracked version of yourself. Now, these habits are by no means everything I did to get to Grand Champ, but they're an awesome overview on the right steps to improve your Rocket League gameplay. Look, if I could do it, you can too. Trust me. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end, and drop a like and subscribe if you want to support my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching, love y'all.